Module 3 test review covering topics with linear and absolute value functions. So question one, graph the following equation on the coordinate plane. So we have an equation in standard form to x minus seven y equals 14 using the y and x intercepts. So the x intercept is when y is zero and the y intercept is when x is zero. So you can define the y intercept I'm going to put, or to find the x-intercept, I'm going to put a 0 in for y. Or you can just put it as 2x equaling 14. So here, I end up with 2x equaling 14, because 7 times 0 is 0. Divide this by 2, and my x-intercept is 7 when y is 0. And to find the y-intercept, I would put a 0 in for x and we would solve for y. So 2 times 0 is 0. All I have left is a negative 7y equals 14. To get y by itself, I'm going to divide everything by negative 7. And the y-intercept is when x is 0, y is a negative 2. So I'm going to plot those points down. So on the y-axis, point at negative 2. And on the x-axis, point at 7. And I can draw my line, and there's the line for that linear function. Question two, determine the rate of change, or the slope, of the ordered pair. Now, when they give us two pairs, ordered pairs, we're going to use the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to label this as x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have 6 minus 3 divided by negative 1 minus 4. And I simplify it. I end up with 3 over negative 5. So my slope is a negative 3 fifths. Second part, find the value of r so that the line passes through each pair of points has the given slope. Again, we're going to use that same formula because that equals our slope. They give us a slope. We're going to find out the missing coordinate. So I'm going to call these my, I'm going to make these my twos. So I'm going to, actually, I'll just keep this as one. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have 1 minus 4 divided by 7 minus r, and this has to equal 3 fourths. Now here I can simplify the numerator up here. So this is really going to be negative 3 over 7 minus r, and this is going to equal 3 fourths. Now I have two proportions here, and I have an equal sign in between, so I'm going to cross multiply. So negative 3 times 4 is going to give us, let me erase that part here. So this is going to give us a negative 12 equaling, and then I cross multiply the other direction. 3 times 7 is 21 minus 3r. Okay, I need to get the r by itself, so I'm going to subtract 21 on both sides. And this is going to give us a negative 33 equaling a negative 3r. The opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. That means the missing coordinate is going to be a positive 11. Question 3. Amanda has $210 in her school lunch account. She spends $35 each week on school lunches. The equation y equals 210 minus 35x represents the total amount in Amanda's school lunch account. Y for x years or x weeks of purchasing lunches. Find the x and y intercepts and interpret their meanings in the context of the situation. So to do this, I want to make my x and my y on the same side. So to do that, I'm just going to be adding 35x to both sides. So I really have an equation of 35x plus y 
equals 210. Now to find the intercepts, I make each of them, like if I want to find the y-intercept, I know x is 0. That's going to give me y equaling 210. And then over here, I would have 35x equaling 210 because y would be 0. And if I divide that by 35 on both sides, I can grab my calculator. And I would do 210 divided by 35. And that would give us 6. So x will give us 6. So we found our intercepts. Now we have to interpret their meanings. So let's do the x-intercept first. So the x-intercept means, and again, our x represents the number of weeks. So after six weeks, she will have zero dollars left in her account. And the y-intercept, that means after zero weeks, she would have $210 in her account. Or you could just write it as she starts with $210 in her account. Question four, determine the rate of change or known as a slope from the given table. So again, you can use the slope formula or you can see how are the x changing. So here I can see that my x's are increasing by one and I wanna make sure that my x's are increasing or decreasing by the same amount. Then I can look at my y values. Here I know I'm subtracting six, I'm subtracting six, and I'm subtracting six. So if you think rise over run, which is the change in your y divided by the change in your x. So that means I have negative six divided by one, which would mean I have a rate of change or a slope of negative six. And question five, find the slope of the line given the graph. Here, if I'm given a graph, I can just do rise over run. You can see from left to right, I'm going down one, two, three. So this is a down three. So I show that with a negative three. And I go to the right, one. So if I do rise over run, that's gonna give me a negative three over one, which is a slope of negative three. Or if you use the slope formula, I can say this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. I would have negative two minus one divided by one minus zero, I still get negative three over one, which is still a negative three. Question six, write an equation of a, of a line in slope intercept form with the given slope and y intercept. So this has to be in y equals mx plus b. So I would have y equals my slope of negative four x and my b is y, negative nine. So that would be minus nine. The next one, I have the slope of zero and a y-intercept of eight. That means this is just gonna be y equaling eight because you would have no slope. This is a horizontal line. Question seven, write each equation in slope-intercept form. So putting this one in, y equals mx plus b. That means I have to get the y by itself. The opposite of subtracting 10 is adding 10x. And when I do that, I have 2y equaling 10x plus 12. Divide everything by two to get y by itself. I now have y equaling 5x plus six. And our last one, I'm gonna add 2x to both sides. 
I have negative 8y equaling 2x plus 24. Divide everything by negative 8. Make sure you're dividing both numbers by negative 8. And I'm left with y equals a negative 1 fourth, because that's the reduced fraction of negative 2 eighths. And then I have a minus 3. Question 8. Suppose regular gasoline costs $2.76 per gallon. You can purchase a car wash at the gas station for $3. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the total cost y of purchasing a car wash and x gallons of gasoline. So this part right here, 276 per gallon, that is our rate or our slope. And our the, the car wash is only one cost. It only costs $3. So that would be our y-intercept. So I would have y equaling... 2.76x plus $3. And the second part says, find the cost of purchasing a car wash and eight gallons of gasoline. So X represents the number of gallons. So I would put eight in for X. So 2.76 times eight plus three. And we'll grab our calculator again. And we'll plug everything in here. So you have 2.76 times 8 plus 3. That's going to give us a total of $25.08. Question 9. Describe the translation in g of x equaling x plus 4 minus 10 as it relates to the graph of the parent function. So here we only have translations in here. So again, up here, I would rewrite this as x minus a negative four. That means it's going to the left four. And then this minus 10 on the outside, that's our k. So that would mean it's going down 10. Next part, describe how the graph of each function is related to the parent to the graph of the parent function. Again, I have an A here, and just a reminder, the parent function with transformations would be f of x equaling a times x minus h plus k. So now I have an A, it's one sixth. It's inside the parentheses. So that makes it a horizontal dilation. So I'm going to write horizontal. And since it's horizontal, this is, I have to think I can only move it right or left, or I can compress it or stretch it right and left. Since this is less than one, less than one, if I were to treat it like a slope, it would go up one to the right six, but I can only go right and left. So this would be a horizontal stretch. And then there's a negative on the inside. That means there's a reflection because of the negative. And it's gonna be reflected over. And because it's on the inside of the parentheses, it's affecting the X coordinate. That means it goes from a positive X to a negative X. So if I draw a quick coordinate plane, it goes from a positive to a negative, which means it's going over the y-axis. And the next one, g of x equaling negative 5 times x. The a, which is 5, is outside the parentheses, so that means we have a vertical dilation. It goes up 5 over 1. So I can only move it, I can stretch it up, or I can stretch it up or down, or I could compress it up and down. Since this is greater than one, this is a vertical stretch. And there's a negative involved, so that means there's a reflection. And again, if I drew coordinate plane, it's on the outside, so it affects my y. So it goes from a positive y to a negative y. 
that means it's going over the x axis. Question 10. Gene loans Bernie $1,500. Bernie agrees to pay Gene an extra $225 when he repays the loan in one year. What is the annual simple interest rate of the loan? So we're going to use the formula A equals P for the principal amount times 1 plus the rate times the time. And we're going to substitute the numbers into that formula. So the account balance is going to be, so we'll have the account balance after it's all paid off would be the 1500 plus the 225 which will give us 1725 equals the principal amount what amount did he have to start paying would be paying back would be 1500 times 1 plus the rate we don't know the rate but we know the time is 1 so let's get the parentheses by itself because that has our variable with it. So we're going to divide this by 1500. Now if we grab our calculator again, we're going to do 1500, or not 1500, we'll do 1725 divided by 1500. That gives us 1.15 equals 1 plus the rate times 1 is just 1 plus r. Subtract 1 on both sides. The rate is going to be 0 0.15. But remember the rate is a, is a percent. So I would have to take 0 0.15 and multiply that by 100 because a percent is out of 100. And we would say the rate as a percent would be 15%. Question 11, describe the translation in g of x equaling negative five times the absolute value of x plus two minus one as it relates to the graph of the parent function. Okay, the parent function of an absolute value function would be f of x equaling the absolute value of x. So we do have the vertex so the vertex is normally at zero, zero. But remember here, this is really gonna be x minus a negative two. So let me write that in a different color. So it'd be absolute value of x minus two, which means it's that our h is gonna be a negative two, which means that's gonna go to the left. So we go to a left two. And then the minus one here tells us that it's going down one, because that's our k. So the vertex went to the left two, down one. We have an a out here, so a dilation, that five. It's greater than, or it's on the outside, so we know that's vertical. And it's greater than one, so we know it's a vertical stretch. And we know there's a negative involved, so there's a reflection over. And because it's affecting the y coordinates, it goes from a positive y to a negative y. So this is over the x axis. And our last question graph the absolute value function on the coordinate plane and identify the key features. So we have that same equation. So we knew. Going back from the last one, we know that tr the transformations, the vertex went two to the left and down one. So two to the left, down one would be right here. That's our vertex. And then we could actually use the dilation. The dilation means it's a stretch of, vertically stretch of five. So I could actually, and there's a reflection, so I know it's going, it's reflected over the x-axis. So if I go down five, one, two, three, four, five to the right one, or down five to the left one. I have my three points and I can draw 
my graph here. That's a quick way of drawing it out. Or you could pick a number to put in for x. So let's just say I put, I drew a little bit of a table and I put in a negative one for x. So let me get rid of that table again and make that bigger so you can see that. Let's say we put a negative one in for x. Negative one plus two is one. Absolute value of one is one. One times negative five is negative five. Negative five minus one is negative six. So I would have a point at negative one, negative six, which is this point right here. And if I put a negative three in here, because again, I want it on both sides of my vertex here. So if I put a negative three in here, negative three plus two is negative one. Absolute value of negative one is one. One times negative five is negative five. Minus one is negative six, which would be this point right here. Now we can do the uh, key features. The domain for absolute value, the domain is gonna always be all real. The range, it has a high, or high point. The highest it goes on the y coordinates or the y-axis is negative one. So we know that y is gonna be less than or equal to negative one. Never goes above negative one. The end behavior, they're both going, the arrowheads are pointing down. So as x decreases, y decreases, and as x increases, y decreases. And then the increase decrease part, everything is all based on the axis of symmetry. So from this point, so the, the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's increasing, it's going up from left to right when x is less than negative two and it's going downward when x is greater than negative two. So those are questions you can use to review for module three, linear and absolute value functions.